Hey folks, so I just want to spend a couple minutes uh, talk about some batteries here because there seems to be a lot of misinformation going around and um, well, let's see if I can't try and fix that. Uh, unfortunately, batteries is a stupidly complicated subject, so there is a lot that I don't know myself. But uh, let's see if we can't figure it out together. Uh, so what I have here is a whole stack of Game Boy Advance SP batteries. Most of them are OEM, some of them are not, but uh, that should be not too relevant. Um, I did run every single one of these batteries through my battery tester, and what that consists of, that consists of an actual lithium ion charger, and I made this adapter out of a um, just a aftermarket shell that I glued a, uh, a battery terminal into and soldered some wires onto and just attached this up to my charger, ran the batteries through the charger that way and made a note of their capacity, um, a few other notes, but the main thing I was paying attention to was capacity. So just as an example here, this is a aftermarket cell. Couldn't tell you where I got it, but it is labeled 850 milliamp hours, all right? If we take a look at one of these OEM cells, we can see these are labeled 600 milliamp hours. Now, this was made in, what, like 2003, 2004, most likely, uh, maybe even late 2005, <clears throat> later in 2005. This was made significantly later. This is aftermarket. I don't know when it was made, but battery technology has not advanced that much that we can cram um, 250 more milliamp hours in the exact same physical capacity. Now, there is one advantage that this cell has over this one in that this one has a uh, plastic case over it. So if I were to crack this open, which I don't want to do because this is one of my few good remaining batteries, uh, and this is like sonically welded, it'll never go back together once I crack it apart. Uh, but this is a soft, uh, like, a, like a pouch, basically one of these things. Um, so the cell itself is physically smaller, so we can give that give it a little bit of a pass. Maybe you can get, maybe you can actually get about 900 milliamp hours worth of a battery that fits in a, fits in this space, which I guess would make sense because look what we have here. Anyway, I tested this battery at about 22 milliamp hours. So <laughs> that's clearly not what's happening here. Now I want to go ahead and pop this apart so we can take a look at what is in here. So I don't recommend doing this to your good batteries, but it is what it is. This is a, um, like I said, this is an aftermarket battery. I probably got this on AliExpress. I don't know. They all go in the same bin when I get them. Okay. So in here, we have just a generic unlabeled lithium ion cell. And let's take a look at the battery protection board that some people keep insisting that this is. I'm just gonna pull this off. All right. And uh, no components on this side, just the battery terminals. Let's see what's on this side. I don't see much on this side either. Oh, there are some markings under here. R-A-S-K-N-1. That means nothing to me. <clears throat> but there's no components on here. So this is literally just a bare cell, uh, no battery protection whatsoever. Uh, now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, of course, this cell is because this cell is garbage, but that's besides the point. Um, a lot of SP OEM batteries didn't come with protection either. Uh, I think... This is one of the few that does, and this is also one of the few batteries that tested at like 95% of its actual stated capacity. So this is a 600 milliamp hour battery. I tested it at 567. So pretty close. And that's when you consider that the year is 2020 right now, that's actually pretty darn good shelf life. Uh, here's another aftermarket one. This one fared much better at 485 milliamp hours. 
so maybe this one's newer, but I'm pretty sure I bought these all at the same time. So don't know. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at, oh, here's another aftermarket cell. This one's marked 700 milliamp hours. Kind of weird that they'd, uh, it's probably hard to see and I apologize. There we go. Um, kind of weird that there'd be 150 milliamp hour difference when these batteries likely came from the same factory, but that's besides the point. I'm not going to take this one apart either because this one actually tested at 650. So I'm going to keep using this and I'm going to keep using that one since none of my SPs have batteries in them right now. Um, okay, so here's an OEM one that tested pretty low. There's another one. That one tested high, high-ish, reasonable. And then these two are pretty low. I mean, not low enough that I'm going to get rid of them. Well, I think I'm going to get rid of this one because it's a... Uh, I can't tell by putting them together. One of these is a little bit bulging. Uh, interestingly, the one that's higher capacity is bulging less. But whatever, that's besides the point. Um, sorry if this video doesn't have a lot of structure. I didn't really plan this out. I'm just kind of rambling. But let's uh, let's take apart another couple of these. What do you say? So this is... Oh, here's another interesting thing I want to mention. <clears throat> Game Boy Advance SP batteries did come in two different types. Notice this one is 3.7 volt lithium ion battery, whereas this one, also OEM, is a 3.8 volt lithium ion manganese. So this is what's called an LMO, or lithium ion MN battery. Um, it's basically the same as a regular lithium ion cell, except that the uh, voltage curve is a little bit different. So I'm, I'm not 100% sure the specific differences, but I do know that um, these things tend to fall off a little bit faster. So what I mean is most of their capacity is in the higher end range, whereas the other type of lithium ion batteries are a little bit more balanced, which is why this one has a higher nominal voltage. The actual charge voltage of these batteries is the same. So about 3 to 3.2 to 4.2 volts. But let's, let's take this one apart and see what we find. I love how much easier this one is coming apart as I throw it around. Oh, that's just weird. I, I just had to say something, didn't I? I'm just using my knife to get a grip on these. I'm not trying to cut or poke anything. would probably make my life easier if I just cut this wrapping off. I was trying to keep things as they were so I could just put it back together, but that's clearly not happening. There we go. All right. So again, here's an OEM battery. Lithium LMO. And of course this little holder thing is two parts that have been joined. And I don't think there's any way to get it apart without breaking it. But I think that's just what we're going to have to do.
Okay. So yeah, I totally destroyed that, but it's kind of what I expected. Notice this terminal, this gold pad right here, that goes right to this side of the battery. No protection, no circuitry whatsoever. And it looks like this other one on this side does the exact same thing. So let's take that apart nice and carefully. And, oh, would you look at that? We have the same thing on this side. No protection whatsoever, literally just bare metal circuitry. Um, I suspect I will find the exact same thing on this battery because it's literally the same battery, same label and all. Um, this one, probably the same thing because this is also a lithium manganese cell. And yeah, of course all the battery, I should have taken this one apart, whoops. Yeah, uh, unfortunately I'm not quite willing to take apart my regular lithium ion cell. But I suspect this is the one that we would find the protection in, if there were protection in any of the batteries. Uh, but this, you saw it right here. This was an OEM cell. I took it apart. There's no protection. So I've seen people commenting on Reddit threads and not quite my other videos because I don't really do a lot with batteries for, well, for this specific reason. But... Um, People keep talking about how, oh, there's no protection, you're going to burn your house down. Well, yeah, guess what? OEM SPs didn't have any protection either. It's all on the, the SP circuit board. It's not in the battery itself. Now, the batteries I'm using do have their own protection, and um, that is also for a reason. Um, batteries aren't quite made to the same spec as they were in... 2003 when these were manufactured or whatever it doesn't actually have a date on it so yeah i would rather double up on the protection for batteries it's it's you know it's not going to hurt you but i mean it's no more dangerous than oem to just use uh you know whatever whatever you got protection or none um but anyway I guess that's all I wanted to say, um, but I do have a few questions for you guys. If any of you out there do have a battery tester and multiple OEM Game Boy Advance SP batteries, I'd, I'm rather curious if you get the same findings I do, because on all of my LMO cells, I noticed a much lower capacity than on my regular 3.7 volt lithium cells. So I'm just curious if that's just, you know, weird one-off thing for me or if that seems pretty typical for these batteries. I'm also curious if uh, these batteries are the earlier batteries or the later batteries. Um, and of course these are aftermarket so they don't really count. And uh, oh, just for shits and giggles, I threw this in the tester as well. It didn't test at 900 milliamp hours but didn't really expect it to. But it did test at about 850 so this is still quite a bit more capacity than this battery here that I've been using and should be the same charge and discharge profile so it should be just as safe and nonetheless it does have its own protection circuit so I don't know it is what it is um let me know your thoughts because like I said batteries just it's such a complicated complex topic and there's you know everyone has their own opinion but there isn't really a uh, consensus that I can find on this sort of stuff. So I'm always interested to to learn more, to read more about this kind of stuff. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Like I said, I'm not an expert, but I have done quite a bit of reading about this stuff. So I don't know, maybe I have some insight regardless. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have an excellent night. Okay, just want to do a quick addendum. I was peeling, well, just before I get into that, this is one of the tabs that I cut off that OEM battery. It's literally just a nickel tin or whatever the hell strip this is. And then the end has been plated in gold. Uh, but the other tab, I was peeling the tape off of and I noticed this little component down here. So there is, okay, I was saying there's no protection, but there is this component here. And for those that don't know, well, 
myself included, because I have no idea what that is, I'm fairly confident it's just a fuse so that if you were to put a dead short across the terminals on this battery, this should pop and then the battery should be completely useless. So, uh, and don't try this at home, but let's try that out. Let's see what happens, huh? Okay. So because this was a perfectly working battery, we can see if I put my probes across it, there's still continuity. Well, I can see that. You can't because the meter's out of the frame. See? Continuity? No continuity. Continuity. Excellent. So let's try making a mess here. I've got my uh, other power supply that I built but never use in my videos. It is set to 12 volts and whatever the hell amperage. It's It does have current limiting on it and I don't know what it's set to but hopefully it's not going to blow up. And uh well, let's let's try it out. Yeah, uh, just should probably move all this flammable stuff. Just in case, I do have this handy. I'm not that dumb, but uh, let's see what happens, huh? I oh, see it's limiting the current. Let's bump that up a bit. Oh, good lord. Set it to almost 16 volts. And uh, here goes nothing. Yeah, see, it's passing 3.2 amps. That's nuts. Let's bump that all the way up. I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> Overcurrent protection. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's wonderful, isn't it? Switch that off. It's probably a good way to blow this stupid thing up, but don't do this at home. Yeah, nothing. Well, I don't know what it is, but it's certainly not a fuse, because that passes a whole heck of a lot of current. Oh, probably shouldn't have dropped that. And let's see. It still passes current, so maybe not a fuse, but... Um, I'm forgetting the name of the component, but it's basically temperature sensitive. Uh, if if that component or the battery that it's physically right up next to gets too hot, it'll go open circuit. Maybe it's even resettable. I don't know. Um, or maybe it's just a diode. Who knows? If anyone knows what this is in specific, I'd love some more detail. But it's certainly not overcurrent protection. I'll give you that much. Let's see if we can't take it. Or just break it. See, it looks just like a fusible link to me. It's hard to say. What does this text say? There's text on it. I can't read it. I can't even tell if I have it upside down or right side up. Hmm. I'll have to do some more research. But if anyone knows, I'm all ears. Thanks, guys.